Welcome to this training module on the Husqvarna's W500 Professional Walk Behind Mowers. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we'll introduce you to this powerful line of mowers and teach you how to use them properly and safely. Walk Behind Mowers are designed for use on large, open grass plots. They are also generally easy to use around trees, shrubs, and other obstructions. In some cases, they are more appropriate for use on hills and slopes than stand on or riding mowers. While Husqvarna's walk-behind mowers offer great performance and convenience, they are still powerful machines. Make sure you pay attention to the operating and safety advice in this module, and take your time learning to use the walk-behind mower. Remember to read the operator's manual before using the mower. Don't take risks. If you have questions, consult your owner's manual and ask your supervisor for advice. Let's take a closer look at one of our professional walk-behind mowers. As you will see, it's a lot like residential mowers you may have used in the past. You will also see that it's a bigger, heavier, and more complex unit. Here you can see the Operator Presence Control or OPC lever, which must be engaged for the engine to run. Steering Controls. Safety Handle slash Speed Control. Speed Adjustment Lock. Throttle, which regulates engine speed. Choke. Service meter. Blade switch, which engages the mower blades. Engine switch. Hydraulic oil reservoir. Fuel tank. Fuel tank cap. Parking brake. Engine oil dipstick. Brake. Hydraulic pump bypass valves, which allow the mower to be moved when the engine isn't running. Safety is vitally important when using this or any other mower. A large part of safety comes down to operating and servicing the machine properly. But you should also understand the personal protective equipment, or PPE, you should use with a walk-behind mower. Recommended PPE includes hearing protection, eye protection, and safety boots or other approved footwear. Your boots should have non-slip soles and tied laces, and preferably steel toe caps. You should also be sure to wear proper clothing when you operate the mower. Don't wear baggy clothing or anything with loose sleeves or strings. These can get caught up in the mower's moving parts and potentially result in severe injury. You should also wear long pants. Shorts leave your lower legs more vulnerable to debris that might fly up from the grass during mowing. Husqvarna's walk-behind mowers use unleaded gasoline. Make sure you put the correct type of fuel in the mower or you could seriously damage the engine. Always fuel up your mower outside on even ground. If the mower is on a truck bed or trailer, take it off and put it on the ground to fuel up. Do not fuel the machine indoors. Gas fumes and spilled gas can be toxic and a potential fire hazard. Always be sure to keep the machine away from any type of open flame or spark when fueling and extinguish all ignition sources, including lit cigarettes. Also, don't fuel your mower when the engine is hot. If you're in the middle of a job and need to add fuel, give the mower sufficient time to cool down before you fill it up, or you might burn yourself on the hot mower components. To add fuel, make sure the engine is off and the parking brake is engaged. If the machine has been running, first allow the engine to cool, and then remove the fuel cap slowly and carefully to release any pressure in the tank. Add fuel carefully and slowly so you don't spill any on the unit or the ground. Keep the nozzle in contact with the rim of the fuel tank at all times. It's important to leave some space in the tank when you add fuel. As the mower works and heats up, the gas in the tank will heat up as well and expand. Leave room to accommodate the expanding liquid. If you do spill fuel, clean it up immediately using an approved oil soak product. Make sure you clean it off of the mower before starting, and if you spill on your clothes, Change them. Spilled fuel is highly flammable and a serious safety risk. Do not start the mower near spilled fuel. With the mower fueled up, we can get down to work. Here's the process for starting the engine. Watch as our operator adjusts the safety bar halfway back and tightens the speed adjustment lock for a moderate mowing speed. Engages the parking brake. Disengages the mower blades by pressing the blade switch down. 
moves the throttle lever to the mid-throttle position. If the engine is cold, you'll want to pull up the choke control to help with starting. Next, the operator pushes in and turns the ignition key to the start position. Remember not to operate the starter for more than 5 seconds at a time. If the engine doesn't start, wait approximately 10 seconds and try again. When the engine starts, the operator releases the ignition key back to the run position. If the choke was open for a cold start, push the choke control knob back in at this point. Finally, our operator sets the engine speed with the throttle. He lets the engine run at about mid-throttle for a few seconds before moving to full throttle for mowing. With the engine started, the operator will release the parking brake, pull the blade switch up to engage the mower deck, and grasp the safety bar and steering controls to begin moving. We'll talk more about steering in the next section. Before we get to steering, let's look at how to stop the engine. To stop the engine, the operator puts the steering controls into the neutral position and releases the OPC lever. Next, he disengages the mower deck by pressing the blade switch down. Then he moves the throttle switch to the minimum position and engages the parking brake. Finally, he turns the ignition key to the stop position and removes the key. Remember, never leave the key in the ignition unattended. Steering. The control levers on each side of the mower are used for steering. To move forward, gently press the two levers forward together. To slow and stop, ease the two levers back to the neutral position. To go backwards, gently pull the levers back behind the neutral position. As with any mower, you should be very careful moving in reverse. Be sure to use the smaller safety bar at the rear of the console when moving in reverse. To turn to the right while moving forward, Pull the right lever slightly backward toward the neutral position. This will slow the rotation of the front right wheel, causing the mower to turn right. To turn to the left while moving forward, pull the left lever back toward the neutral position. Your mower is also capable of a zero turn, which means it can turn 360 degrees in its own footprint. To perform a zero turn to the right, press the left control forward and pull the right control back behind the neutral position. To perform a zero turn to the left, Press the right control forward and pull the left control back behind the neutral position. A zero turn is an advanced maneuver and you should be very cautious when you attempt it. The mower can turn very quickly. Stay alert and follow precautions to avoid losing control. Practice zero turns in open spaces and make sure there is no one close by. Mowing. It's important to survey your site before you start mowing. Make sure the area is clear of bystanders and children. Long grass can hide rocks, debris, and other objects that can get in the way and cause damage. You won't always find everything, but it's important to scout the terrain before you begin. After doing a site check, our operator prepares to begin mowing. He started the engine as outlined earlier. At the moment, the parking brake is still engaged. The operator moves the throttle control to full throttle and then engages the OPC. Now he releases the parking brake and engages the mower deck by pulling the blade switch up. Finally, he grasps the speed control bar and steering controls to begin mowing. Again, if you're mowing in reverse, use the smaller safety bar at the rear of the console. Generally speaking, if grass is long, you may want to cut it twice, once at a higher setting and then again at a lower setting, until you reach the desired height. The best mowing tends to come from using a high blade speed. You can move fairly quickly, but pay attention to how effective your cut is. If grass is very thick, you may have to adjust your speed and go a bit slower than you would in normal conditions. When mowing in a large area, start by turning to the right. This way, grass clippings won't blow onto roads, sidewalks, or flower beds. After two or three rounds, you can switch to the opposite direction. Obviously, different sites will have different landscaping features. You may have to adjust your pattern to avoid spraying clippings on them. It's generally not a good idea to mow wet grass. The mower's wheels may sink into the soft grass, which could cause clumps that may stick to the underside of the mower. Slopes and hills. Mowing on slopes and hills requires more caution and can result in severe injury or death if proper precautions are not followed. In fact, we recommend that you don't use most stand-on or riding mowers at slopes greater than 10 degrees. Walk behind mowers offer a bit more control, but still shouldn't be used on slopes greater than 15 degrees, 
If you're unsure about using a walk behind on a slope, ask your supervisor. Again, it's important to do a site check inspection before you mow a slope. Look for holes, ruts, obstacles, or drop offs that might cause problems. Mow up and down slopes with a walk behind mower, never across. Mow at a slow ground speed so you don't have to stop. Avoid stopping, starting, and turning on a slope. And don't make fast or sudden changes in speed or direction. Also, avoid mowing wet slopes because the wheel can lose traction and you can slide. If you lose traction, disengage the blades and continue slowly down the slope in a straight line. If stopping is absolutely necessary, put the steering controls into the neutral position. Push them forward very gently to begin moving again. Finally, don't mow near drop offs, ditches, or embankments. If you're uncomfortable mowing on a slope, ask your supervisor for direction. Using a Husqvarna W500 is the same as using any walk behind mower. It takes practice, and you should be extremely careful until you become comfortable operating the machine. It will take time to get the feel of the controls, steering, and speed. Go slowly and learn to use the mower safely with help from your supervisor. It's important for the operator to make sure the mower is in good working condition before each use. Look for wear on wheels and other parts, and check that all nuts and bolts are tight. Pay special attention to blade attachments. Also, check the discharge guard before each use, as well as the parking brake. Don't operate the mower without the full grass catcher, discharge chute, or other safety devices in place and operating properly. You will also want to check the engine oil. Ask your supervisor to show you the procedure. Be sure to wait until all moving parts come to a stop and the machine cools down before checking engine oil on the job. In most cases, you won't be required to do the maintenance on the mower, but if you need to do repairs at any point, make sure the engine is turned off. It's a good idea to clean grass clippings and dirt off of the machine after every use. Make sure the engine is turned off when you do this too. Don't spray water on top of the mower deck. Instead, use compressed air to clean the top side of the mower. You can use water with normal water pressure on the underside of the deck. Do not use a high pressure washer or steam cleaner. Make sure the mower deck is raised into the transport position when cleaning and avoid spraying the engine and any electrical components with water. Finally, don't rinse hot surfaces with cold water. If the mower has been running and is hot, let it cool down before you clean it. The Husqvarna W500, like other lawnmowers and power equipment, can potentially be dangerous if used incorrectly. The blades move very fast and can cause serious, even fatal injuries. Anyone who uses the mower should respect it, follow the safety instructions in the owner's manual, and be careful. We'll approach safety in terms of three areas, personal hazards, bystander hazards, and property hazards. Personal hazards. We define a personal hazard as any hazard that can cause injury to you personally. Your personal safety starts with personal protective equipment. Make sure you have what you need to protect yourself. Also, make sure you pay attention as you mow. Don't get distracted or lost in the rhythm of the work, or you may not notice a rock, hole, or other obstruction in the way. Accidents can happen quickly. Stay focused and don't go too fast. Do not make adjustments to the mower unless it is turned off and the parking brake is engaged. Also, always keep your hands and feet away from rotating blades, the underside of the machine, and the discharge opening. Do not run the mower indoors or in spaces without ventilation. The exhaust fumes contain carbon monoxide, which is an odorless, colorless, and potentially lethal gas. When mowing, be aware of tree branches or brush that might hit you in the face. Always wear your eye protection. Finally, remember that the engine and exhaust system can become very hot during operation. Let the machine cool down before refueling, making adjustments, or transport. Bystander hazards. Bystander hazards are hazards that might hurt people around you. First and foremost, watch for people, whether they are coworkers or clients, as you work. People can appear very suddenly and without warning. Your ear protection and engine noise may also make it hard to hear what's going on around you, so keep your eyes open and stay alert when operating the mower. 
Watch for children in particular. Children are sometimes interested in the machine and might approach you. Even if it's not running, be careful. The blades are sharp and the engine can be hot. Always keep children away from the mower and out of the mowing area. The blades may also throw heavy or sharp objects like rocks and debris. This is another good reason to keep a safe distance from your coworkers and other bystanders. It's also one of the reasons why we do a sight check before we start. It may seem obvious, but it's worth cautioning that you should never, ever let people ride on the mower. Professional walk-behind mowers are meant to be used by a single operator. Using the mower in any other way can potentially result in severe injury to you, the rider, and others. Property Hazards Property hazards are hazards that might damage property, including the mower. Again, debris thrown by the mower blades is a primary hazard in this case. You can damage nearby vehicles, break windows, or tear up gardens with rocks or other objects. Remember to do a site inspection before mowing and be on the lookout for debris in your mowing path. You can also damage terrain if the cutting height is too low and you go over a dip or bump. If you drive too fast or don't have control of the steering, you can cause damage to property, buildings, fences, and vehicles. Make sure you mow at a speed you can handle and be careful with turns. Don't run with the mower. Be careful of your footing, especially in deep grass or on uneven ground. If you lose your footing or run and slip, you can cause serious damage. Needless to say, all of the above can cause damage to the mower as well. Damaging a client's property can be a very costly mistake. At very least, you might lose the client. At worst, you could be looking at extremely expensive repairs. Be vigilant and be careful. Do not attempt to lift the W500 walk-behind mower, even with partners. Professional walk-behind mowers are very heavy, over 700 pounds, and are not intended to be carried. Instead, push the mower carefully up and down ramps. To move the mower when the engine is not running, you will need to engage the bypass valves. Remember, if the bypass valves are open, but the parking brake is not engaged, the mower will roll. Make sure the mower is on a level surface before you open the bypass valves. To open the bypass valves, park on a level surface and engage the park brake. Move the steering parking brake controls to the neutral position. Turn the two bypass valves counterclockwise as you're facing the mower, one full turn to the open position. Release the parking brake and push the mower to the desired location. Again, when loading or unloading the mower, use ramps and be careful. Finally, always make sure the mower is securely attached to the truck with ropes, cables, or other equipment. Your Husqvarna walk-behind mower is equipped with tie-down points welded to the mower's frame. When transporting the mower, be sure to secure the mower to the trailer with a ratchet strap or other DOT-approved load-securing device. If you don't use these tie-down points, you could cause damage to the mower. Husqvarna professional walk-behind mowers are an effective and powerful mowing tool. Use the tips throughout the module to make sure you get the most from your mower and that you keep yourself and those around you safe while you use it. For further information, consult your owner's manual or speak to your supervisor.